Hello guys this is your friend Dark Fox Sage. And we are back with our new fanfic. Which is. What if Kakashi failed Sasuke and Sakura and took Naruto as his apprentice. Part 1. And if you enjoy this fanfic then please press the like button. And please subscribe to the channel it motivates me to upload more fanfics like these for you all. Now let's start the fanfic. Why am I the only one tied to a post? None of us got bells. Stated the angry blonde. Because Naruto, you were the one who fell for the trap. Stated Kakashi with an eye smile. Good. At least now I won't have to deal with your dead weight, Dobi. Stated Sasuke smugly. Yay, me and Sasuke can be together and Naruto can be kicked back to the academy. Stated Sakura happily. Hmm. They're no team. Naruto tried to get help, and they left him. So should I fail them all, or take Sensei's son as an apprentice? It's your lucky day Naruto. Thought Kakashi slyly. He was about to announce to the team that none of them would be on the team, when suddenly Naruto escaped the rope and began to walk away. If that's how you see my sacrifice, then you can figure out the point of this test on your own. Check your belt Kakashi, I'll be seeing you too at the academy. And with that, Naruto disappeared into the tree line. Dobi must have finally lost it. Stated Sasuke, who then noticed what the blonde had said. What did he mean when he said he would see us both at the academy? Kakashi's mind was racing. He reached down to the bells, only to find that when he touched them, they dispersed to show two rocks. Upon further inspection the rocks had team and work scratched into them. He knew this whole time. He failed on purpose so that I would pass the other two. Naruto. That seals it. All right you two, since Naruto clearly has no want to be on the team. There is no team. Naruto has obtained both bells, and upon you both bad-mouthing him, has left you to fail, along with him. You are to report to Academy Room 207 for placement into the Genin Reserves. What? But the Dobi quit, you said the two of us would pass if we got the bells. Shouted Sasuke. Yes, but you see, had you not belittled Naruto, you all would have passed. Unfortunately, neither of you are worthy of being on my team, so you will both be entered into the reserves. Stated Kakashi as he stared into their eyes. What about Dobi? He abandoned us. Shouted Sasuke. Yay. That idiot caused us to fail. Agreed Sakura. Look at the post he was tied to. Stated Kakashi, pointing at two bells that were sitting atop the post. He may not want to be on the team, but he did everything he could so that you two would pass, even after you belittled him. If I had it my way, you would be kicked from the program altogether, unfortunately, I don't have the power to do such a thing. Stated Kakashi as he began to walk away. Don't walk away from me. Shouted Sasuke as he charged the Jonin, only for Kakashi to slam a kick into his chest launching him into the post Naruto had previously occupied, causing the bells to fall on his head. That will be the only warning either of you get. If you go after me or my student, I will kill you. Stated Kakashi seriously before grabbing the bells and disappearing in a swirl of leaves. But first, one quick stop. Hokage Tower. Sorry I'm late, I had to defend myself against a Rouge fan. Stated Kakashi cryptically, though most just saw it as one of his worst excuses. Many scoffed, though Sarutobi, the third Hokage, understood completely. Would you like to file charges? Most if the room became confused, usually the Hokage would just dismiss his horrible excuses of the cycloptic Jonin. Yes, I will be, but since you have gone through everyone but me, I'll inform of my team. Stated Kakashi. Getting a nod from Sarutobi, he continued. Team 7, consisting of Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno and Naruto Uzumaki failed. 
though due to one of their choices, tactics and obvious skills, I will be taking them as an apprentice. Figures, the Uzumaki is a dead last, I bet it's because of him that they failed. Stated Ebisu, his contempt barely hidden. Now now, I won't have anyone badmouth my student. Stated Kakashi in a singing voice, confusing the room. But you said that the team failed. Surely Uzumaki isn't your apprentice when the Uchiha did all the work. Stated Kuranai, a new Jonin who held an amount of contempt for the boy due to her father dying during the Kaiubi attack. Sasuke Uchiha is the reason the team failed. He did nothing to help his team and even attacked Naruto when Naruto managed to get close to the bells. After the test ended, both Haruno and Uchiha belittled Naruto to the point that he quit the team before it was even formed. And just for your information, Naruto got the bells single-handedly and chose to leave them for the Uchiha and Haruno. Stated Kakashi. Let it be clear, Naruto Uzumaki is my apprentice. Not the Uchiha, not the Haruno. Naruto has earned the right to be my apprentice. I will not stand for any blatant disrespect of the young man that keeps this village safe every day of his so far miserable life. Good. We will begin the paperwork immediately. You are all dismissed. Tora, bring me Naruto. Stated Serutobi. Also, Ebisu, while I cannot punish you for your thoughts, I will be removing you from teaching my grandson. He has made no improvement over the last six months and I will not have your foolish hatred rub off on him. Naruto's Apartment Building Naruto walked into his apartment angrily slamming the door. Luckily, the only other person who lived in the building was the nice old deaf lady on the first floor. He knew something like this would happen, he would get the short end of the stick. He always did. After taking off his jacket and throwing it on his ratty old couch, revealing previously unseen muscles, Naruto walked into his kitchen and went to grab a ramen cup. He stopped dead in his tracks when he noticed two bells and a piece of paper on his counter. Naruto. I have decided that I will be taking you as an apprentice. And Anbu will be by shortly to bring you to the Hokage Tower to fill out the paperwork. Kakashi. An apprentice. It'll be his only student. That's awesome. A knock at the door took Naruto out of his thoughts. Naruto moved to open the door, only to find Sasuke and Sakura standing before him. Can I help you? Questioned Naruto, blocking the view into his apartment. Dobi. I'm going to kill you for keeping me from my goal. Stated Sasuke seriously. But first, how did you get the bells from him when I couldn't? Yay Baka. How did you steal Sasuke's bells? Questioned Sakura, who Naruto ignored. Fuck off Sasuke. I did everything necessary for us to become a team. You have only yourself to blame. If you don't get away from me now, I will hurt you. Stated Naruto just as seriously as the hand he had been holding the door with moved slowly towards the kanai he kept near the door. Sasuke smirked as he drew a kanai. That sounds like a threat Dobi. Now you've forced me to defend myself. You just claimed you were going to kill him. Stated a masked man who was now holding the wrist of the Uchiha. I was sent here to retrieve Uzumaki. But now I have to bring you in for your actions. Naruto, can you make it to the Hokage Tower? No problem Tora, nice seeing you again, have fun with duck butt. Stated Naruto as he locked his door and moved down the hall. This isn't over Dobi. Shouted Sasuke, who was quickly knocked out by the Anbu. Baka, you get back here. Now. Demanded Sakura as she chased him down the hallway only to be backhanded into the wall. Listen here Haruno. You have no power over me and never will. I will be filling for a restraining order against you. I never liked you and I will not be abused by you anymore. Stated Naruto as he walked away, disappearing down the stairs. Hokage Tower. Hmm, I wonder where Naruto is. 
Tora should have gotten him here ten minutes ago, stated Kakashi. Suddenly, a loud yell was heard and the doors burst open, revealing Naruto dragging a secretary into the room. Gigi, can you tell her I'm supposed to be here? Mrs. Tari, questioned Hiruzen. Naruto is allowed in this room whenever he requests. The secretary popped up and began sputtering. I'm sorry sir, but I assumed the Jonan meeting was still underway. I told you ma'am, it's okay, I was just told to come here. Stated Naruto. Mrs. Tari, you are in no trouble, but please leave the room. Stated Hiruzen. She quickly left the office, leaving the doors slightly open behind her. Now Naruto, back to why you are here. Stated Sarutobi, making a hand seal. The double doors shut and the blinds were pulled down the windows. Kakashi put his book away, looking at the old cage calculatingly. Do you truly believe now to be the best time? Yes Kakashi. You were his student. I can think of only one person alive fit to tell Naruto who his parents are, and he is out of the village. Stated Sarutobi seriously. He is your apprentice now. There will be no secrets between you. My parents. But Gigi. You said that you didn't know my parents. Stated Naruto, his gaze hard and his chakra slightly flaring. Are you saying that you've known this whole time? Does he know? It was for the best Naruto. Up until this morning we believed that you took after your mother too much to know the truth. She was a very open and different person in her youth. Stated Kakashi as he stood straight up. You were afraid I wouldn't be able to handle it or I would tell someone. Stated Naruto seeing the logic. I understand that, but you should have known, Gigi. Yes. But after today I know differently. Kakashi took a deep breath. You've heard of your mother, though not her last name. Lady Kashina, the second hero of the Third Great War. Known for dispatching an entire Kumo platoon by herself using only Kenjutsu and her outrageous stamina. Her maiden name was Uzumaki. My mother was Lady Kashina. Questioned a stunned Naruto. Then who was my father? Another Uzumaki. No Naruto. You were given your mother's maiden name to protect you from your father's enemies. Stated Kakashi before moving to the window behind the Hokage, lifting the blind and motioning for Naruto to follow him. Your father was a very powerful man, yet kind and fair. He was my sensei, and he's on that monument. Now, Naruto, contrary to popular belief, was a very intelligent young man. And it did not escape him when his new sensei said his father was on the monument. And with Hiruzen being too old, and Toborama and Hashirama Senju being dead long before that, that left only one person. Minato Namikaze. Yes. My sensei and your father. He was a very good man Naruto. Stated Kakashi with reverence. Both Naruto and Serutobi said nothing for a while. Naruto because he was processing what he had been told, Serutobi on the other hand, was contemplating what to do next. The estate was destroyed in the Kyubi attack, and the will said that he wouldn't get the property till he became 16. The civilian council will not like if Naruto gets any large portion of his inherent money now. Both the Rasengan and Horaishan are too complex and dangerous without Jiraiya here and I've already taught him much. That leaves only the apartment building. Serutobi suddenly gained a mean smirk. Village Beauty Restoration Act. Naruto. I am sorry that I had not told you earlier, but this is very sensitive information. Stated Serutobi. I know only six other people in the village that know the truth. And one of them I will arrange for you to meet, he is a very good man and I feel that you would benefit from meeting him. I assume you mean Kosuke? Questioned Kakashi, getting a nod from the old cage. Kosuke. You mean Kosuke Maruboshi? The eternal genin? Questioned Naruto, surprising the other ninja in the room. You've heard of him Naruto? 
questioned Kakashi's one visible eye showing surprise. Yay, he saved me after a prank once. He said that it was a very well thought out and executed prank, said that it reminded him of the Yandam. Naruto's eyes grew wide and he fell silent. Huh, I'm kinda disappointed that I didn't pick up on it earlier. Kakashi couldn't help but sweat drop. He was just told that his father was the fourth Hokage, and he is disappointed in himself that he didn't figure it out sooner. Sensei. He really is your son. A knock at the door halted any further conversation. Hokage-sama, the council meeting is due to being to discuss the genin assignments. Hem, seems that we will have to finish this conversation later Naruto. Stated Sarutobi, sharing a meaningful look with Naruto, before another sinister smile adapted to the old cage's visage. Actually, Naruto, as genin of the leaf and apprentice of elite Junin Kakashi Hitaki, I invite you to the meeting. Uchiha District. The way you acted today was shameful. Sasuke spun around, a tall, bandana-wearing man with round sunglasses standing in the middle of the street. Who the hell are you? My name is Ebisu. I am an elite tutor. Stated Ebisu as he took a step toward the last loyal Uchiha. You not only cost your team a chance at being placed with one of the strongest ninja in the village, you then went and attempted to assault a fell genin. Sasuke hung his head and snarled. My actions were shameful, but it's the dobe's fault. Because of him I missed a chance to grow stronger. No, it is your fault. I reviewed your file Sasuke. You have a problem with teamwork. That is something that cannot be allowed in this village. Stated Ebisu as he adjusted his glasses. No matter your feelings or beliefs, you must be able to work with those around you. You will never grow stronger by pushing people away. What do you know? You don't even look that strong. Stated Sasuke. I am a Jonin, and I've personally trained countless Chunin and Jonin. Stated Ebisu before he turned around and began walking away. If you do not have a sensei in one week's time, come find me. Sasuke watched Ebisu walk away, his mind swirling. I need to find strong people to train me and to train with. Maybe he does have a point. Council Chambers, 15 minutes later. Let us start the meeting. I am sorry for nearly delaying this venture, but I had several matters to finish before I was able to come. Stated Sarutobi. Now, since all council members are here, we will call off all guests. Jonin Commander Shikaku Nara. Here. Stated the lazy Junin before slouching in his seat. Chunin co-commanders Katetsu Hagen and Izumo Kamazuki. Here. The duo replied. It wasn't well known, but each level had their own commander. Because of the fact that the Chunin rank had more ninja, and because the duo had been partners for such a long time, they worked together as co-commanders. Genin Commander Kosuke Maruboshi. Here, Hokage-sama. Answered the eternal Genin respectfully before adjusting his prosthetic leg. Meanwhile, Naruto, standing between Kakashi and Asuma, watched in awe of the ninja around him. Jonin that he had heard of, but never seen, people he had read about, and he was standing among them. And to think, I'm just starting out and I'm already witnessing a council meeting. Jonin's Kakashi Hitaki, Kurinai Yuhi and Asuma Serutobi. Here, here, here. Genin Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto was taken aback for a split second, surprised he had been called, even as only a spectator. Here. Good, it seems everyone necessary is here. Now before we begin with the passing teams, Asuma. Stated the elder Sarutobi, sending a glance to his son. Daimyo Tumaki is going to be arriving in two hours. You are going to be his escort while he and I are not meeting. He has expressed interest in seeing all the new genin in action, so it shouldn't interfere with your team's schedule at all. Asuma simply nodded and stepped forward. 
then I request to go first, so that I may prepare for any variation in his arrival time and meet him at the gate. Granted. Continue Asuma. Stated the elder Sarutobi. Team 10, consisting of Scout Ino Yamanaka, support Shikamaru Nara and frontline fighter Choji Akamaiki has officially been formed. Stated Asuma. They completed their test with great fluidity and good teamwork. Ino needs to be broken of her fangirlism, Choji needs to learn how to use his weight to his advantage and Shikamaru needs to sleep less. A collective sweat drop formed over the council, the laziness of the Nara clan were legendary, but even Shikaku wasn't that lazy. Any questions? Asked the Hokage. Asuma was surprised to see none other than Danzo's hand go up. Danzo took the silence following his raised hand as his signal to start. I understand you said that the Yamanaka heir has a crush, who on? Once again the council was shocked when Naruto raised his hand politely, looking to the Hokage to gain the right to speak. You have something that needs to be said, Naruto. Yes Hokage-sama. The crush in mention is Sasuke Uchiha. As far as I know, there was only one girl in my class that did not fawn over him like he was a god. Stated Naruto, who stepped back to his spot upon completing his sentence. I told you this would happen here as in. The Uchiha is too much like his grandfather. The girls can't help themselves. Joked Danzo, getting a snicker from the elders and a shake of the head from the Hokage. Be that as it may, he will no longer be a problem now that he is on a different team. Stated Serutobi. Heishi raised his hand, signaling that he was about to speak. Uzumaki-san. You said that there was only one girl that you knew of that wasn't infatuated with the Uchiha. Who would it be? Your daughter, Hiyashi-sama. Hanada, while extremely shy and having low self-esteem, is actually the best kunoichi of our grade. She is very smart and if she wasn't so shy, I would imagine she would be a force with her bloodline in taijutsu. Stated Naruto respectfully. Heishi simply nodded, though on the inside, he was smiling. So I'm not the only one who sees it. He must have some kind of special bond with her, like Minato had with Hannah. I wonder why he is here today. If that is all. Serutobi looked around for a bit. You're free to go Asuma, remember that he will be staying with us for the remainder of his visit, so no midnight smoke breaks in your underwear. Asuma groaned at his father's remark, knowing that he was only trying to embarrass him in front of Kurenai. Same for you. He finished with a smirk before poofing out of the room. After the giggles from the father-son show died down, Serutobi signaled to Kurenai to begin. Team 8, consisting of scout frontline fighter Hinata Hayuga, tracker frontline fighter Kiba Inazuka and scout tracker support Shino Abarame. Stated Kurenai, getting a nod from Serutobi to continue. Shino needs little to no work, he is already a fine ninja, level-headed, confident and skilled, much like Yushibi. Kiba is far too brash and narrow-visioned when it comes to anything but combat. Hanada, like Naruto said, lacks confidence. Any questions? No one responded. Thank you Kurenai. You're up Kakashi. Kakashi, who had not his usual orange book, but a little green book with a worn cover, put the book away and gazed lazily at the Hokage. Team 7 was originally supposed to be frontline fighter, scout Naruto Uzumaki, support Sakura Haruno and frontline fighter Sasuke Uchiha. Unfortunately, due to conduct unbecoming of a Konoha ninja, I have dropped both Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno from my team, and will be renaming it Team Kakashi with myself and Naruto as its only members. Stated Kakashi. Chuza raised his hand, along with most of the civilians, minus Counselor Unte, a younger man who had his hand in more than a dozen stores throughout the village, 
and Councillor Haruno, a wealthy merchant in ex Chunin, who had already spoken to Kakashi about his daughter's failure. You may go first, Chuza. Kakashi, what could have been so unbecoming that you would drop not one, but two students? Questioned the gentle giant of a man. As you all know, I give the bell test. Usually two of the students try to edge out the other and they fail. This year was different. None of the students managed to work together. One student did his best to get the other two to work with him, and when that didn't work, he single-handedly got the bells from me, even though one of his so-called teammates tried sabotaging him. Stated Kakashi, getting startled and surprised looks throughout the room. There had never been that kind of reaction to the bell test. Naruto Uzumaki using an adaptation of his special henge and his quick thinking, managed to take the bells and replace them with rocks while I was busy with his clones. Special henge. Muttered Danzo under his breath. It was when time ran out that things began to turn worse. Knowing that Naruto had swapped the bell, I tied him to the post, as I didn't want to hear Sakura screech about being tied up. When Naruto asked why he was tied up, both the Uchiha and Sakura began belittling him. It got to the point where Naruto broke free of his confines, announced that he was leaving the team and left the bells on top of the stump he had been tied to. And left the clearing. I announced the team's failure, and that I would be taking Naruto as my apprentice. Sasuke Uchiha attacked me, I defended myself. It came to my attention that the Uchiha then went to Naruto's apartment and attempted to assault him, only for an Anbu to interfere before Naruto dealt with Sakura. So the academy is falling below standards. Insubordination cannot be tolerated and the fangirls should not be this bad. Commented Danzo. Indeed. Azumo, Kotetsu, gather all the chunin that work as teachers and office assistants. Shikaku I need you too. Serutobi looked over to the Nara, only to see him staring at Naruto as if he was a riddle he could not understand. Hokage-sama. I move to request Genin Uzumaki remove his jacket and shirt. And yeah yeah, I'll get the headmaster and assistant for the meeting. Stated Shikaku. And have him channel chakra. Naruto was put on alert that Shikaku might uncover the fact that he was in much better shape. Serutobi, trusting the Naris judgment, spoke. Go ahead Naruto. Sighing in contempt, Naruto removed his jacket and shirt, surprising the assembled group with his rather muscular appearance. Now please, use the henge, and change into me. Started the Nara, getting confused looks from everyone though Naruto did as asked, turning into a perfect copy of the lazy Nara. Anyone see anything wrong here? It took more than a full minute for anyone to speak up, so the Nara gave them a bit more help. Everyone's eyes widened when the laziest man in the village got up and walked over, standing next to the henge Naruto. Heishi, activate your Bakugan. Heishi, also wanting to see where he was going with this, did his ask, and immediately widened his eyes. That's not possible. There's no discernible difference, the only difference amount of chakra and control. Hokage-sama, I believe that Naruto actually transforms when he uses this henge. Stated Shikaku. If he was able to change two rocks into bells, which he did, then this jutsu is far greater and more robust than the academy henge we may have an infiltration experts of Jiraiya's renown if he is properly motivated. Something like this would be invaluable, are there any drawbacks? Stated Danzo. I think I know one. Stated Kakashi, before lightly punching the Shikaku clone Naruto in the side of the head. Then watched as the henge dropped. Hey. That hurt cried out Naruto, returning back to his shirtless form, quickly remedied by Naruto redressing. Kakashi nodded. Any amount of force makes the henge disperse. We can discuss this later. Stated Danzo. 
What disciplinary actions are we taking with the other two in the academy? For the Uchiha and Miss Haruno, I believe Kakashi and Naruto are best to decide. Stated Serutobi. As for the academy, everyone minus Haruka Yumino will receive a crash course in how to stop fangirlism and be reminded of what they are supposed to teach. I will be bringing up assault charges and a non-mission related restraining order against the Uchiha for attacking me while my back was turned. Stated Kakashi, getting a nod, from the ninja and a look of disbelief from the elders and the civilians. As for Sakura, I believe a spar with Naruto, watched by her classmates and parents would do just fine. A spar. You say she borders on insubordination and has no concept of teamwork, and you want to have a spar. Questioned Hiyashi, his incredulity flowing freely into his words. Yes. I determine Naruto here to already be at high genin. All he really lacks is experience. If he can defeated Sakura, and badly, in both a one-on-one, -on -one, and a team spar, she will either break of her fangirlism, or is incurable. Stated Kakashi strongly. Who would her partner be? Ino Yamanaka and Shikamaru Nara. Stated Kakashi. When Naruto beats the three of them, they will both be on the path to correction, and even if they win, Naruto will have given them the beating of a lifetime. You are very sure if this young man's strength and power Kakashi. Obviously he is very intelligent, his pranks have proven that. But why do you believe that he can beat three other green genin so easily? Questioned Counselor Haruno, wanting to know if his daughter truly was so weak as to not be able to contribute in any way. I believe that would best be answered by Naruto. For Hokage-sama, stated Kakashi, getting a look of silence from the Hokage. Or perhaps you, Shikaku. Three days later, training ground 10. Why again are we all here? And why do I have to fight him? Questioned Shikamaru with a groan. Man, I don't want to fight Naruto, he's so troublesome. This is an exercise for the new genin. Stated Asuma. You and Ino, along with Sakura, are going to fight Naruto. It is believed that there was a problem with the genin testing. Alright, but why are the rest of them here? Questioned Shikamaru, lazily looking over the gathering crowd. He saw academy teachers, Jonin, classmates, and horrifyingly, his parents. Wait, was that the fire daimyo? You're not questioning why you're fighting Naruto? Asuma asked, his cigarette hanging from his lip. Naruto is stronger than us, the only ones of our class that stand a chance are Shino and Sasuke. Stated Shikamaru, his eyes trained on Naruto, who had just arrived with his Jonin instructor. Think you can beat him? Asuma asked, his eyes now trained on Naruto. Yay, but it's going to be troublesome, he's hard to plan against because he is unpredictable. Answered Shikamaru. Besides that, I don't know any of his intangibles. Oh please, even if he is way hotter than I thought. Stated Ino as she looked over Naruto, who is now wearing black Anbu style pants and a tight muscle shirt. He's still Naruto. Naruto is a lot stronger than he looks. Stated Choji who was still standing behind his new teammates. Remember when he caught my hand a few months ago? I put all my weight into that punch and he caught it. Before any of them could respond, the Hokage entered the clearing followed by Counselor Haruno and Sakura, whose eye had almost healed. After he made it to the center of the clearing, he stopped and cleared his throat. Good morning everyone. Today we will be having a spar. It has come to my attention that Naruto Uzumaki, along with other students, have been improperly ranked and categorized in the academy, which lead to Team Kakashi being failed and lead to Naruto Uzumaki to becoming the only member of his team to not be sent back to the academy. Muttering began in the clearing. Uzumaki had been paired with the last Uchiha. That mean that the last Uchiha had failed. But if Naruto had been the only one to pass, 
did that mean Sasuke had been the reason that they failed? Now would Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno, Shikamaru Nara and Ino Yamanaka please join me? Stated Hiruzen as he nodded to Sakura's father, who left the clearing to join the crowd, standing next to Shikaku. After a few seconds, the Hokage was surrounded by the new genin. Naruto Uzumaki will now fight all three of his present classmates in a three-on-one fight. As added incentive, should Naruto win, Team 10 will be given a mandatory 10D rank missions, where they will be accompanied by Sakura Haruno. Should Naruto lose, Naruto will receive the same punishment. Such a fine challenge. It shall be a pleasure to be the judge of this match. Shouted a tall, bowl cut, green spandex wearing man. Ah yes, guy, right on time. Stated Hiruzen. If you would. My pleasure. Genin, ready. Naruto, ignoring the fascinating sight before him, nodded and dropped into an odd stance, his legs staggered, one hand on his kanai pouch and the other in a fist by his chest. Guy paused, looking at Kakashi, who nodded and signed that he would tell him later. A moment later, Guy raised his hand. Then, begin. Naruto, knowing Sakura's physical limitations, sped towards her, landing a punch on her gut, folding her over and knocking the wind out of the pink-haired girl. He was almost caught of guard and forced to parry a blow from Ino, who was aiming for a knockout punch. He caught her fist, slipping inside get guard and wrapping an arm around her torso, spinning them both around before slamming her into the ground and retreating in time to avoid the shadow extending from Shikamaru. This is really troublesome, but it's going to be more work to do those missions than to beat you. Stated Shikamaru. Well, that's the spirit I guess. Laughed Naruto, who quickly dodged a kanai that was thrown by Sakura as he located Ino, who was now holding a kanai. That's better. Shikamaru's eyes widened as he had to defend himself from an onslaught of punches from Naruto. He had been correct. Naruto was hiding his true abilities in school, but Shikamaru was still smarter. Just as Naruto was about to connect a punch to Shikamaru's face, he froze. Shadow possession jutsu, success. Muttered Shikamaru. He smirked as he began to raise his hand. You have to beat all three of us. I can still lose and we win. Shikamaru's eyes grew wide as he felt his hold on Naruto fading as he watched the arm he was trying to raise begin to shake. Thud. Everyone's eyes widened as the watched Shikamaru bounce along the ground, Naruto's right arm still extended as he jumped back in time to avoid a punch from Sakura. Ino rushed over to cover Shikamaru as he made it to his feet, his left cheek swollen and beginning to bruise. Ino stood before Shikamaru, giving him time to recover, while Sakura fell in line with Ino. Naruto paused, back into the odd stance that he had started in. I advise you don't move. Ino, who had caught her breath, brought her hands up into the mind transfer jutsu, only for the ring of a kanai crack into her right hand, forcing her to hold the appendage in pain as the kanai fell to the ground in front of Ino. Everyone turned back to Naruto, his hand already back and resting on his pouch. I tried to warn you, next one I'm going for a jugular, and it won't be the ring. A shriek caused Shikamaru to quickly look up to Ino, who along with Sakura had a kanai held at their throat by Naruto's clones. Shadow clones actually. Stated Naruto. Winner, Naruto. Stated Guy as he took control of the situation. Almost everyone was shocked silent. The genin because the dobi just walked over three of his classmates, and the chunin and up were amazed that the boy used shadow clones, let alone the fact that Naruto had broken the shadow possession jutsu with raw strength. Several sets of eyes landed on Naruto or Kakashi, both looked bored, though Naruto was chatting with Shikamaru. Kakashi watched as Kurenai walked up to him, anger in her eyes. 
You taught him shadow clones. You're lucky he's not dead right now. How irresponsible can you be? Ms. Yuhi. Naruto knew that technique before he was assigned to Kakashi. Stated the Hokage, gaining the attention of the surrounding ninja. In fact, Naruto learned that jutsu before he became a genin. He is allowed to use it however he wants, and he has the chakra to do so. Hokage-sama, I find it hard to believe that a mere genin has enough chakra to abuse a B-rank jutsu. Stated Kurenai. Believe what you want Ms. Yuhi. I think I have seen enough for today. Stated Hiruzen as he turned to walk away. Kakashi, I expect you will have him ready. While the growing crowd stood stunned at the exchange and the information they had heard, Ino was making her way over to Naruto. Shika, leave. I need to talk with him. Shikamaru, never one to purposely enrage Ino, quickly departed. Ino glared at Naruto until Shikamaru was out of earshot before speaking under her breath. You groped and humped me. What? Questioned Naruto, his eyes bugging out. No I didn't, I barely touched you. When you held the kunai to me. You grabbed my breast, then rubbed your crotch on my butt. Stated in, anger clear in her eyes. But I didn't hold you at knife point. My clone did that. Stated Naruto seriously, now somehow remembering that his clone had done just that. Don't screw with me Baka. You might be a hell of a lot stronger than I thought you were, but I know you can't make clones, and even if you could, clones can't grab you. Stated Ino. You're right, I can't make clones. Stated Naruto as he raised his hands into a cross symbol. A moment later, another Naruto popped into existence. These are shadow clones, they're physical copies of me made from chakra. Ino inspected the identical clone of Naruto, finding it remarkable. When she was done inspecting it, she poked its chest, finding out quickly that Naruto was telling the truth. Enthralled, she continued to pat and prod the clone, Finding that not only was it a complete copy of Naruto, but Naruto was really put together well. I didn't think this was possible. Um, please stop touching me. Stated the clone, getting a yelp from Ino. You can talk. She asked, her heart racing from the unexpected response. Well yeah, I'm a clone of him, I can do anything he can. Stated the clone, getting a perverse look on his face. How about you check and see if all of me is real? Ino began to sputter and turn red, frozen from what Naruto, or at least his clone, had just said to her. Before she found her voice, Naruto's fist crashed into his clone's head, dispelling it in a poop of smoke. Damn clones. I wonder why they like teasing you so much. Normally they just cause mischief. Stated Naruto, an apologetic look aimed at Ino. It's because they don't have to worry about the ramifications. Stated Kakashi as he walked up to the two with Asuma in tow. It's both a blessing and a curse. Stated Asuma. Come on Ino, we need to really work on training. Okay sensei. Agreed Ino, wanting to get stronger is not to be outclassed by Naruto. This isn't over Baka, I'll beat you next time. As Ino and Asuma walked towards Shikamaru and Choji, Kakashi spoke up. You did all right, but you left a lot of openings and it was choppy. Let's go visit a friend, he will know the best way to fix that. Training Ground 7. Ah, Kakashi. How is your day going? Stated the tall bowl cut man that had officiated Naruto's match. Naruto, you didn't get introduced before. This is Maida Guy, the leading taijutsu expert in the village. Stated Kakashi, seemingly ignoring Guy. Not bothered by the fact Kakashi had not addressed his question, Guy continued. Ah yes, Naruto, the only person to ever pass Kakashi Hitaki's genin exam. I was most impressed by your spar this morning. Guy Sensei. I have completed my warm-up. 
shouted a miniature version of Guy on the other side of the training ground. Do them again Lee. Yes Guy sensei. Guy, where is the rest of your team? Asked Kakashi. Neji is on clan business, Tenten is manning the weapons shop. Stated Guy as he looked over Naruto. Now Kakashi, why does Naruto know the first kata of the hummingbird style? He knows Guy. Was all Kakashi said in reply, causing Guy to immediately turn to Kakashi and stare into his eyes. It won't be long before it gets out. I'm going to start him on the training regiment we had once discussed. I see. I cannot say that I disagree. How can I help? Asked Guy. He needs weights and better equipment. He also needs sparring partners. One month later. Again. Naruto panted as he sparred with a clone of Kakashi on the surface of a lake, his weights forcing him to focus both on staying afloat and on the clone that was pressing Naruto just a bit harder than he could handle, forcing Naruto to either grow stronger or fight smarter. Kakashi had found quickly that Naruto learned and grew faster than almost anyone he had met, but only with hands-on training. The one time that Kakashi had left Naruto alone to read a scroll, he came back to find the blonde ready to tear his hair out in frustration. It hadn't even taken five minutes once Kakashi had explained it to him. That's how the blonde had learned the Kanai Shadow Clone Jutsu. That's enough Naruto, let's take a break. Said the real Kakashi as he dispelled the clone, pausing at a memory he received. Hmm, we will have to fix that. Naruto trudged back to solid land and collapsed into the sand of the small lake, his face burying into the tiny rocks. Sit up, that doesn't look comfortable. Stated Kakashi in a serious tone. He watched as Naruto flipped, laying on his back as Kakashi sat down next to him. A few flaws here and there. Nothing terrible for a genin. Your speed and strength are getting close to where we want them. Hey, how come I'm not training more with shadow clones? Questioned Naruto as he sat up. It's a great trick, but until you have a solid foundation, there is no building. Your peak is only as high as your base is wide. Stated Kakashi, quoting Jiraiya. Once we have you up to speed on everything else, we will start. Fine stated naruto reluctantly do you think you made the right choice picking me over sasuke no stated kakashi quickly getting naruto to look at the cycloptic junin i know i did you could already give some chunin a run for their money sasuke doesn't even come close to your learning curve naruto smiled his eyes casting out over the lake thanks sensei don't thank me yet it's time for reflex training. Minus three hours later. No good, one-eyed bastard. Complained Naruto as he trudged toward his apartment. It had become a bit normal for Naruto to limp his way home after his afternoon spars. I either fight Lee, and get my ass kicked, or I fight Kakashi, and get my ass kicked. You should try not getting your ass kicked then. Naruto turned his head to see a purple-haired Jonin wearing a trench coat with an open mesh undershirt and an orange mini skirt. You are an outstanding looking woman. Stated Naruto sincerely before he turned back and continued toward his apartment. Now hold on you little shit, you can't just compliment me and walk away, do you know who I am? She asked incredulously. Yes, Anko Mitarashi, Snake Summoner. Special Junin with mid to high Junin level fighting caliber, poisons expert and uses her flashy style of dress to distract men and women alike. Stated Naruto with a smile before once again continuing toward the construction zone that was his apartment. You're definitely Kakashi's student, brat. Compliment a lady and then just walk off. Stated Anko in mock anger. Call me Anko. Sorry ma'am, but I'm really sore and tired right now. Stated Naruto. I'm in no shape to follow up my compliment with any kind of fleeing. Anko fell into step with Naruto, striding alongside of him. I like you brat. 
Most men either try to fuck me or are scared shitless. Don't get me wrong Anko. I'd use your ass as a bongo drum in a second if I didn't feel like I was going to die soon. Stated Naruto, shocking Anko and some bystanders with his brashness, something he had developed from Kakashi. Have to admit, I never heard that one before. Smiled Anko before she wrapped an arm around the blonde's neck. I think I'm going to like spending time with you Gaki. Maybe I'll help out with your training. I'd like that. Kakashi Sensei says I need to work on my infiltration. Stated Naruto with a smile. You're one of the best right? Tell you what brat. I just moved into the same apartment building as you. In my off time, I'll teach you a few things, after you pass my test. Stated Anko with a sinister grin. I don't like the look of this. Muttered Naruto. Oh you're going to kid. Stated Anko. I heard about you getting into the Hokage Tower and how you killed that traitor Mizuki. I left him alive. Stated Naruto, his eyes darkening. That is what is in the mission report. I'm the one who examined him, we both know that you beat him to death. Stated Anko with a ruffle of his hair. I'm glad you did, he was a no good traitor. You should take pride kid, you already have your first kill. Naruto blocked out the thought of Mizuki for now. He knew he died from his injuries, but he didn't like thinking about it. Can we drop that? I'd rather not bring that up. Ever. Sure thing kid. I remember my first kill. Stated Anko with understanding. Her tone then switched to playful. I'll give you a jutsu if you pass my test. Yeah. Last time someone told me that it didn't turn out well. Stated Naruto with a deadpan expression. Don't worry brat, it's nothing like that. Snorted Anko before a sly grin overtook her face. If you can manage to get into my apartment, and retrieve one of my black bras, without dying, I'll teach you a stealth jutsu. You're being oddly sexual towards a 12 year old. Stated Naruto with a blush on his face. Trust me kid, I'm not looking to marry you. But you put that forehead protector on, and you've already done more taboo things than flirt with a woman who is 11 years older than you. Stated Anko with a perverse grin before leaning down and whispering into his ear. You pass enough of my tests, and I'll let you have some bongo drum lessons. With a cackle, Anko was gone and Naruto was blushing up a storm. He hurried back to his apartments, missing the fact that Anko and Kakashi were standing next to each other atop a nearby building. He's smooth Kakashi. Between us, we can make him untraceable. He's already pretty sneaky Anko. He painted the Hokage monument in broad daylight. Agreed Kakashi, flipping a page in his book. Bongo drums huh. Might have to use that line. I thought he got it from you. Stated Anko with a smirk. Maybe there is more to this gaki than meets the eye. Just please don't kill my student. You've already set him up to fail. You don't wear black bras. Stated Kakashi, how he knew that for a fact bugged Anko. You let me worry about that. Stated Anko with a certain smile. Anko. You're not seriously considering that are you? He is an adult Kakashi, and he has to have seen something to make that perverted henge of his. Maybe seeing a real set of tits might be good for him. Stated Anko with a grin before she once again disappeared. Great. My apprentice is going to be killed by the biggest pervert beater since Lady Tsunade. Stated Kakashi with a shrug. I'm sure he will be fine. Naruto's apartment. The walk to the top floor of the apartment building was never a fun one after his training sessions with Kakashi. While in the academy, thus building had been a dump, but his apartment was always well maintained. Three weeks ago, a group of construction workers had showed up and started renovating the whole building. The big surprise, came when he got home one day after training in the entire top floor, including his apartment, had been gutted. 
Luckily, the Hokage had met him that day and informed him of this change. Naruto had been given the entire top floor of the building, including the rooftop, to him. Now his apartment consisted of four bedrooms, one master bedroom. That was basically the size of his old apartment, a large living room, a separate kitchen and dining room, large enough to feed a family of Akamaiki, three full-sized bathrooms, complete with showers, a library, a trophy room, that Kakashi had insisted on, where Naruto currently kept all of his gear, a sitting room, which Naruto thought was simply the dumbest thing he had ever heard, and enough closet and storage space to ensure that Naruto never had to worry about having too much stuff. That reminds me, thought Naruto as he places his palm on a seal on his front door and pumps some chakra into it, hearing the telltale unlatching. I need better kanai, I can't use these for the quick draw that dad's style needs. Naruto strolled into his apartment, which really was like a luxurious house, minus the bare interior. He placed his sandals on the mat and collapsed onto his old, ratty couch. I have to get some new shit in here. I have a millionaire's apartment with dumpster furniture. Don't forget that most of the rooms are still empty. Hey sensei, commented Naruto as he looked over to the door and saw the silver-haired Jonin stroll in and sit in his old recliner. Saw you met Enko today, stated Kakashi as he giggled. We have agreed that she will help with your stealth and infiltration skills, among other things that you will need. Naruto sat up, his weighted limbs hanging limply. So she says, she is a cock tease. Kakashi looked to Naruto, a curious expression on his face. It's good you understand that now. One of the things she will be training you in, is seduction. Naruto stared at his sensei, his face reaching an atomic level of red. W what? Lord Hokage assigned me to you for several reasons, of which you already know, but with how powerful your parents were, you are going to be a target. Anko has agreed to help teach you both how to resist seduction, and how to perform it. Replied Kakashi. Anko is the best in the village, and if you can resist her, I doubt there is anyone you can't resist. And if I don't want to? Questioned Naruto. Not an option, I had to go through the same training due to my father. You need to as well. Stated Kakashi. No. I mean, what if I don't want to resist her? I read her file, she's a lot like me, and she is really hot. Blurted out Naruto, pulling a large laugh from Kakashi. Naruto, resisting seduction doesn't mean not having sex, it means not giving up intel, or in your case, not getting tricked and led around by your dick, or getting a girl pregnant with the grandchild of the Yandaimi. Laughed Kakashi. And trust me, as my pupil, if you get the chance to sleep with Anko, I expect you to fuck her into into the mattress. Next day, training ground 3. Naruto had just gotten done with his warm-up when Kakashi called him over. Naruto, you've grown well. I'd say that you're well on your way to Chunin, but you still have one major weakness. Naruto nodded. I still can't perform Genjutsu. You never will Naruto, unless it's some of the Nadimes. You have cage level reserves, and thanks to the Kyubi, your reserves will continue to expand just as fast as your control improves. Stated Kakashi. So for now, you can create one clone to practice escaping Genjutsu. Since it's rather simple until you get to Chunin level Genjutsu, I'll let you do it with a clone. Naruto smiled and let out a small sound of excitement before he created a clone and had it go with the Kakashi clone. Another thing I have to teach you, is to keep your awareness up. I've caught you two or three times where you got tunnel vision and left yourself open. Stated Kakashi seriously. That won't be much of a problem versus a genin, but that is something to keep in mind as we advance in your training. Naruto nodded his hand rubbing the back of his head. I got ya sensei. Good. 
I smiled Kakashi. Now, let's get back to your weapons training. We only have three hours today, and I want you to have the quick draw down at 50 feet. After that we are going to work on the next kata for your father's style. Six hours later. Higurashi weapons. According to Kakashi, the single best weapons shop in Konoha, and from the look of the inside of the shop, Naruto had to agree. Wall-to-wall -wall displays of weapons, supplies, clothing and holsters. Naruto actually found it hard to focus on any one thing, or even any one section. He began to walk through the surprisingly large shop, searching for a good set of kanai. Can I help you? Naruto turned to the counter, where a girl that looked to be his age moved out of the back room before lightly leaving on the counter. He had seen her before, usually she was showing up right when he was leaving the bushy brow duo. Yeah, I need a better set of kanai, preferably heavier. I can't bury these in a target like I want. Well my name is Tenton, and I'd be happy to help you out. Stated the girl as she walked over to him. Naruto smiled, and pulled out a lone kanai, handing it to her handle first. See how the balance is more toward the handle. I think I need something that is weighted more at the tip. Tenton held the knife and unsurprisingly, it felt like a normal kanai. These is pretty standard, any more weight in the tip would cause it to be unbalanced. Stated Tenton, her tone unsure. You say you're not getting the penetration you want. Naruto nodded. Yay, it's like they don't carry momentum through the target. Maybe a thinner profile and a longer blade. Tenton nodded, but had her doubts. Well, come on it back and you can test a few out. As she lead the blonde, she wondered if he was just a bad thrower, or if he actually did need a different set of kanai. She walked him back to a narrow corridor, where a post stood about 15 feet away. Let's see how you threw those first. Then I can try and find. Thump. Tenten's eyes went wide, she had been looking right at him, and he actually managed to throw it without her noticing. She looked down at the post, a kanai buried two to three inches in. What the hell was that? Questioned Tenten as she looked closer at the kanai. You told me to throw it. Shrugged Naruto. But. Thought Tenten as she backed up, looking at the blonde's arm. Do it again. Naruto gave the girl a questioning look, but went ahead and did it anyway. Thump. Tenten was actually in awe. His arm had fished out a kanai, got a perfect overhand hold on it, and bent at the elbow, releasing it just as his forearm was parallel to the ground, sending it racing into the post. That's incredible. Hey dad. Come look at this. A large, burly man came out of a back room looking at 1010, and then Naruto, his eyes narrowing at the blonde. You needed something Tenten. Tenten nodded enthusiastically. Do it again. Naruto sighed and whipped another kanai down at the post, burying it between the two kanai already down there. Tenten's father's eyes went wide, his mind flashing back to another blonde that he had seen perfect that exact throw. A wave of realization washed over him. Of course. That's why Hitaki is training him. He claims that he isn't getting them deep enough, but he gets them to a kill depth. Stated Tenton as she looked back to the kanai. Any deeper and you would come out the back. The man nodded, his eyes trained on the blonde. Naruto Uzumaki. Student of Kakashi Hitaki. Yes sir. Confirmed Naruto, wary of how the man knew of him. The man walked over to a shelf and pulled out an old, dusty box, before walking back over to Naruto and handing him a kanai out of the box. It was slightly rusty, a narrow profile and far more weight in the handle than usual, its blade was about a full three inches longer than a normal kanai. That kanai was designed by Jiraiya of the Sanin for a student of his. It is less effective for slicing, but the penetration is outstanding. Stated the man. Give it a go. 
Naruto's eyes widened when he figured out that they were his father's kanai. His facial expression was something that Tenten's father did not miss. Naruto turned around and flung the odd kanai. It buried up to the ring of the handle, the tip sticking out the other side. Holy shit. Both Tenten and Naruto stated at the same time. Tenten's father however, was wondering exactly what he just saw. He shouldn't have been able to throw it that well on the first try, even Minato had trouble with them when he started. Tenten dear, could you go man the counter, I'd like to talk with your friend here. Next day, Dango stand. Anko was grinning like mad. She had won a free meal coupon at the interrogation office, her best friend, Kuranai, had finally hooked up with Asuma Serutobi, she had a few new victims waiting back in the cells. Yep everything was going her way, except for one thing. She had woken up this morning and a certain item, one which she had worn the day before, was missing. A lacy, black bra. That little shit is more than I give him credit for. I took that bra off and went straight to bed. Thought Anko in wonder. I wonder how the brat got into my apartment in the first place. The only opening was my bedroom window. And that only opens two inches, he would have had to jump over me and crawl back out to do it that way, with no hostile intentions, or I would have sensed him. She watched, from her booth in the back corner of the restaurant, as spiky blonde hair moved towards her and sat down. Hey Anko, how have you been? Asked Naruto before he pulled something out from under his jacket and passed it under the table to Anko. That was the only black bra I could find, the rest were beige. Anko found herself irritated at the cocky attitude and the grin on his face. All right brat. Spill it, how did you do it? Promise you won't get mad. Questioned Naruto as he got ready to run. Kid. I told you to do it, and you didn't break anything. Dismissed Anko with a wave of her hand. I just want to make sure that no one else can use the same why you do. Well, I found a window you had left open, so I created a clone and had it transform into a mouse so that it could get in through your window. Stated Naruto. From there, it went to another room, changed back into human form, looked for the bra, found it, came back and handed it through the window, then went into another room and dispersed. Anko looked him in the eyes. Kid, my bed was in front of that window. That means that your clone not only raided my room, but had to crawl over me to hand you that bra. Naruto blushed and nodded. Yeah, that's why I sent the clone in. So I would have a head start in case he woke you up. That's not the point kid. You did all that without waking me up. Stated Anko with an odd edge in her tone. You could have killed me, or groped me. Grope you. Questioned Naruto incredulously as he became red. Don't worry kid, I would have woke up if you did that. Stated Anko dismissively before motioning him to slide around next to her. You passed the first test. Way faster than I thought you would. I thought it would take a month or two. Naruto slowly slid in next to her in the booth, ready to fight for his life if things turned violent. Here's your reward, as promised. Stated Anko as she pulled a scroll from her jacket pocket and handed it to Naruto. It's used to help suppress your chakra signature, you can also use it as a chakra control exercise. You will need it for that beacon of chakra you call a torso. Naruto looked over the scroll and smiled. Thank you Anko-sensei, this is great. Anko smirked before she turned and grabbed one of his hands, making him grope her breast. She chuckled as his eyes went wide. That's for not groping me or peeking on me in my sleep, such a gentleman. Naruto nodded and sputtered something that was a mix between, thank you, and, Okami, oh, as he leaned forward. He gasped again as Anko's other hand landed on his rapidly growing member. Keep the bra kid, it's too small for me anyway. Naruto shuddered as he nodded, 
his body defaulting to autopilot as Anko slid the bra back into Naruto's jacket. Keep up the good work kid, you keep surprising me and I'll keep rewarding you. Naruto choked out another thank you before Anko gave his dick a light squeeze through his pants, drawing a low moan from the blonde. Nice size, maybe in a few years I'll give it a ride. Good luck kid, go ahead and drop a few batches to me, you earned it. Naruto froze up, his mind finally to stimulated to continue. Anko laughed as she watched his whole body go rigid. And thanks for picking up my bill, your real training starts tomorrow, you better not think with your dick as much as you did today. Minus two weeks later, Hokage Tower. Team Asuma stood before the mission's counter, each student looking like they were about to explode. Ah, Team 10. We have a few D ranks left. Stated Uruka, cheerful as always. Actually, we will be taking a C rank this time. My genin are more than ready. Stated Asuma as he looked over his shoulder. After all, Ino would maim me if we did another Torah hunt. You sure? It's only been a month. Questioned Uruka, who looked around Asuma to see Shikamaru and Ino looking at him impatiently, though Uruka could tell that they had grown in their time away from the academy. Looks like getting beat by Naruto was just what they needed. Ino even appears to have stopped dieting. I'm pretty sure Uruka, after all, if it gets hairy I can handle myself just fine. Stated Asuma with pride. If you think they are ready, we have an escort mission to wave country. Offered Uruka, which Asuma took and walked his team over to the client. Uruka sensei. Uruka looked back to see Sakura walk towards him, she also appeared to have been training seriously over the last month. Hello Sakura, how can I help you? Sensei, I'd like to become a tutor. Training ground 9. Sasuke knelt in the middle of the training ground, breathing heavily as he looked at his sparring partner. Shino stood across from him, though his breathing was extremely labored. The Abarame had turned out to be a huge challenge to Sasuke. You held back in the academy. Shino simply nodded. Many of us did. Naruto and Shikamaru the most. Sasuke grit his teeth, but couldn't deny it. Naruto had proven to be much stronger than he had shown in the academy, and Shikamaru seemed to have done the same. Be honest, where would you put me in the class? With what I know you would still be at the top, stated Shino. However, with what I predict, three or four. Sasuke hung his head and nodded, before walking away. Thanks for the spar. Shino simply walked away in the opposite direction. You are a good opponent. I await our next session. That night, market area. How exactly did a genin get a B-ranked mission? Questioned Naruto as he and Kakashi laid in wait atop a building overlooking the market. They had been given a mission to take out a small gang that had been terrorizing shopkeepers. Because you're my genin, stated Kakashi with an affectionate tone. Besides, you only need to capture one of them, I will handle the rest. They have been deemed as threats, huh? Stated Naruto. Once a village deems a group a threat, they send the ninja after them. Correct, however, this is a newer group, and other than their aggressiveness towards civilians, they aren't very impressive. Stated Kakashi as he put his book away and pointed down towards a general store. They just went in. You're up. Naruto took a deep breath and created ten clones. You nine surround the building. You, you go in and arrest them. If they try and run, let the other clones take care of it. They all nodded and moved into their positions. Naruto hopped down and got a good view through the front window of the shop. The clone walked into the store somewhat loudly, his eyes trained on the thug that had made his way behind the counter, threading the man that stood behind the counter. Hey Jero, some kid just walked in. Stated the shortest of the group his greasy long hair and best a comical sight for the clone. 
As soon as the apparent leader turned and saw Naruto, he saw the headband. With surprising speed, the leader was behind the shopkeeper with a knife at his throat. Ninja, you want him alive, you leave now. The clone, however, saw something different. The clone smirked and dispelled, the owners and gang members both shocked to see that the blonde was gone. Outside, Naruto got the memory of his clone that dispelled. The thug, either in stupidity or in his haste, was holding the knife backward, the unsharpened side resting against the shopkeeper's clavicle. Another memory had just surfaced as well, the leader was actually a missing ninja from the land of Waterfall, Genin in level. He had a kill on site order in the bingo book for killing a civilian in a store robbery after he had been removed from their shinobi program. Naruto's hand trembled as he griped one of his new kunai, his eyes trained on the leader, who loosened his grip on the shopkeeper as he looked around the store for Naruto. Clean shot. The window shattered as the leader fell to the ground, a hole through his head, from his right eye through the back of his head, the slim kunai sticking into the wall behind where he had stood. The other two in the store fled out the door and into Naruto's clones, who easily overpowered them and tied them up. Meanwhile, the real Naruto made his way back into the store, comforting the owner, who other than being shaken up, was physically fine. It's all right sir, you're safe. The man looked up at the blonde and shock filled his eyes. He hadn't gotten a good look at the blonde before, but the whisker marks were a dead giveaway. He recognized him now, it was Naruto Uzumaki. The demon brat had just saved his life. Come on, let's get you somewhere else. Naruto said as he helped the man up, making sure to keep him from seeing the sight behind him and brought him out to the street, where several Anbu had arrived to pick up the other two criminals. Kakashi made his way over to Naruto and took the old man from him, telling him he needed a report on the incident, before motioning Naruto to the alley, where Naruto ran, and proceeded to puke his guts out. That's number two Gaki, it's a bit different when you see it happen, isn't it? Hey sensei muttered naruto as he once again heaved out his lunch here drink this it'll help suggested anko as she handed him a small thermos it's a simple tea but it will settle your stomach and if you heave again it won't hurt as bad coming up naruto accepted the thermos and downed the whole thing his stomach instantly feeling better thanks sensei anko took the thermos back it disappearing in one of her coat pockets. She then grabbed Naruto's head and pushed his face between her breast, rubbing him back and forth and patting his back. She let him go, and he slowly backed out, looking at her strangely with a deep blush. That one was free. The first kill is hard kid, most don't make it past it. Keep up the good work, and as a limited time offer, if you are having problems with the faces, come down to my apartment and I'll help you out. And with that, she was gone, which was good, because even after two weeks of nearly relentless teasing, that had been one of the greatest moments in his life. And a part of him reacted rather quickly. Naruto, come. We have to make our report to the Hokage. Hokage's office, five minutes later. Sarutobi looked over the written report and nodded grimly. Odd that a missing nin got into the village, even at Genin level 1. Kakashi nodded while Naruto stayed silent. I would tell you that you are both free to go, but Team 10 just ran across some opposition on their mission. They believe that Zabuza Momochi may be involved. Stated Hiruzen, drawing a shocked look from both Kakashi and Naruto. I've talked with Danzo, it seems that the shipping magnate Gato has hired Zabuza to stop Asuma's charge. So let's kill Gato. Stated Naruto, drawing a shocked look from the other two ninja. What? He is targeting a Konoha client, meaning that he is an enemy of the village. Doesn't Gato run a huge portion of the sea transport industry? Questioned Kakashi. Yes. 
Gado and Gado Industries are in control of most of the east coast and some of the southern coast. Stated Serutobi. If he has that kind of money, then why go after a bridge builder? Questioned Naruto. A missing ninja like Zabuza Momochi would cost a lot of money. He's an A rank. Gato could build his own bridge for that much. Unless he doesn't want a bridge at all. Stated Kakashi. He might have total control over the nation of Wave. Team Kakashi. I am assigning you an A-rank mission to investigate Gato, and if necessary, eliminate him. Your side mission is to provide support for Team 10.